Next up, we have Rampardos. Seeing as we did Luxray recently, following it up with another staple of early game Diamond and Pearl teams means that it's clearly written in the stars that our beloved Gen 4 remakes are on their way, and you can't tell us otherwise. Just like Rampardos, we're extremely hard-headed. This huge dinosaur, specifically Apacocephalosaurus, is best known for its Zadon tactics and being one of the fossils that could be revived in Ouroburg City. Today, we'll be examining if it was able to uh, ram opposing Pokemon Pokemon in the competitive scene. So we ask, how good was Rampardos actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. The first thing that stands out about Rampardos is its attack stat, which can only be accurately described by a long stream of expletive laden superlatives. It has the second highest attack in the entire game. It's base 165 attack stat, eclipsing even the mighty Slack King's 160, and only coming in behind Deoxys attack. Now, if you want to get technical, it is weaker than Metacham's pure power boosted attack, but only slightly, as Metacham reaches a total 480 attack, and Rampardos sets at 471. However, in terms of actual damage dish out, Rampardos makes even Metacham look weak by comparison. This is thanks to the second thing that stands out about Rampardos. It's stab move head smash, which packs a staggering, astonishing 150 base power. And unlike Hyper Beam and its clones, it doesn't require a recharge turn after use. It is equivalent in strength to a max special attack Deoxys attacks Psycho Boost, which is to say it is preposterously powerful. Now it does have a drawback of course, dealing recoil to the tune of 50% of the damage it dished out, but thanks to Rampardos' high HP stat, this was wholly manageable. It could either use the immediacy of choice ban, which would boost Rampardos' attack to a screaming 706, or it could set up with Source Dance, as it approached a 1000 total attack stat, with a single turn of setting up, eclipsing it if it chose to run Life Orb. On top of this, it packed the Mold Breaker ability, allowing it to hit Levitate users like Bronzong, Flygon, and the Rotom appliances with Earthquake. So as one of the most dangerous offensive Pokemon in the game, what did this mean for Rampardos' competitive use in its debut generation? Well, sadly, it was not in for the smashing good time we all hoped for. While it had astronomical attack and great HP, the rest of its stats were abysmal. Now, low defenses can be overlooked on an offensive Pokemon, just look at Infernape, but Rampardos had that most crippling flaw of being incredibly slow, as well as being incredibly weak. Now, you can be slow and be a great offensive Pokemon too, as Tyranitar is no speedster, but you can't be frail as well. It has to be one or the other, and you cannot get away with being slow and frail. While Rampardos could pull off some astounding feats with its choice band head smash, such as it having more than a 56% chance to one-hit KO even absolute max defense Skarmory after Stealth Rock, and having more than a 51% chance to two-hit KO even max defense Swampert with Stealth Rock, it would just never be able to consistently find opportunities to throw its massive attacks out. It was both too frail and hit super effectively by too many common attacks to safely switch in on anything bar Blissey, and too slow to make up for its frailty by threatening slower Pokemon when it came in off double switches or after a teammate had been KO'd like Infernape did. Sure, it threatened slow stall teams, but other Pokemon could do that without being completely destroyed by every single offensive Pokemon in the tier. Rampardos just couldn't hack it. But this isn't to say it never saw any use and OU at all. Its awful speed could be used to its advantage under Trick Room. Dedicated Trick Room teams were rare as a whole and all but non-existent at high level play precisely because they were the epitome of an inconsistent, unreliable gimmick in singles, but they did exist and those teams pretty much automatically added Rampardos. These teams needed to KO as many Pokemon as possible under Trick Room's short duration to make it worth and no other Pokemon could do that as effectively. Plus, there was a certain beauty in watching Jirachi take 80% from a resisted head smash. In Yu Yu Rampardos faced the exact same issues as in OU. It possibly had it even more difficult because even the defensive Pokemon were on the faster side, and even if they didn't outspeed, they threatened to one-hit KO and or deliver debilitating status, with Pokemon like Milotic, Venusaur, Arcanine, Registeel, Weezing, Amasar, and Spiritomb. Chansey was once again the only place it could really switch in safely, and Chansey was reserved for the most hardcore of hardcore stall teams. Stall teams that Rampardos couldn't even always threaten because it was completely shut down by the rock resistance 
resistant Intimidate Hitmontop. In addition to this, Rampartles was of course outsped and severely threatened by just about every single offensive Pokemon in the tier. It was even cleanly two hit KO'd by Gut, Swellows, Brave Bird, and Facade, despite its resist to both moves. It could potentially patch its speed with a Choice Scarf set, and that did give it the jump on many offensive Pokemon, but certainly not all of them, since it only hit a speed stat of 354. This still left it outsped by Dugtrio, Sceptile, and the aforementioned Swellow. Plus, UU packed a ton of priority that Rampardos couldn't take, most notably Toxicroak and Blaziken's Vacuum Wave, and Azumarill's Aqua Jet. Even the possibility of Rampardos trying to fix its speed with Rock Polish to sweep was made impossible, to say nothing of how difficult it was to set up a boost in the first place. Even offensive teams often had little issues switching into not just Scarf Head Smash, but Jolly Scarf Head Smash, since Rampardos needed to compromise on power even further if it wanted to outspeed anything. Pokemon like Donphan, Registeel, Steelix, and Aggron were terrific switch-ins that meant even all the work Rampardos would do just to get on the field safely wouldn't amount to anything. Rampardos' one saving grace in UU was that Trick Room teams were noticeably better than in OU. They weren't metagame defining or anything, but they weren't exactly gimmicks either. It was easy to set Trick Room up since one of its main setters was an already amazing Pokemon, Yuxi, while Slow King was quite good as well, giving Rampardos the support necessary for it to grab that kill or two, provided the opponent wasn't packing priority and had to rely on Trick Room turns running out. Rampardos was still on the less standard side and wasn't exactly a wise choice for important tournament play, but it at least did have a place in the vast wonderland of viability that is DPP UU. That said, since Rampardos wasn't very good in UU, then it wasn't used very much. And since it wasn't used very much, it dropped to the fourth generation's lowest tier, NU. And its issues of being slow and frail were not completely gone, but they were at least somewhat neutered by the tier's overall power level, with Rampardos being able to take a hit from many common Pokemon, like Regirock, Skunk Tank, and Hypno. Of course, its primary use was still on Trick Room, which was at its most viable in NU, packing numerous excellent setters, as Slow King was available just like in UU, and still did a great job, while there were other solid choices in Exeggutor and Porygon 2 to set the stage for Rampardos' Bandit Head Smash to hulk its way through just about everything. Even resists as bulky as Sandslash and Probo Pass needed to have absolute maximum defense investment and stayed at perfect health to even stand a chance. Once again, it was rather niche even in NU, but Rampardos did have its place as the Trick Room poster Pokemon. The fifth generation got faster and stronger, as if it already wasn't easy enough to blitz by and one hit KO Rampardos. And to add insult to injury, Ferrothorn existed. Not only did it resist Head Smash and force even more recoil on Rampardos in the process of taking it via Iron Barbs, the ever present rain meant Fire Punch wouldn't even come close to one hit KOing. This, in addition to the ubiquity of Protect completely shutting down Trick Room teams, as well as the new toy syndrome it had in the previous generation no longer being a factor, meant Rampardos never never even glanced at Gen 5 OU, nor UU for that matter. The next tier down was now RU, and Rampardos had some brief viability there. Funnily enough, it didn't even need to use Head Smash on its main set. It had gained Sheer Force as an ability from the Dream World, and alongside Life Orb and an excellent special move pool, making up for its decidedly meager special attack stat, carved out a small niche as being able to lure physical walls expecting a standard banded Head Smash fare, but then got blasted away with special attacks. Torterra and Drudagon were crushed by Ice Beam. Coolfish and Alomomola were shattered by Thunderbolt, and even the Mighty Steelix was blown away by Focus Blast. If it had to actually use rock coverage, such as against Entei, it could use the more accurate Rock Slide, which was rarely left wanting for power, since it was also boosted by sheer force. That and the fact that even an uninvested Rampardos had stupendously high attack. That said, it could switch Rock Slide out for Head Smash in order to one-hit KO more slow, bulky threats, most notably Amoongus and Eviolite Roselia. One-hit KOing things was the name of Rampardos game after all. It was an interesting set that showed just how many things were viable in RU. As for the classic Choice Bander, it could technically be used, but was generally seriously outclassed by Agron, who in addition to not taking Head Smash recoil thanks to its Rock Head ability, came with the added benefits of an excellent defensive profile courtesy of its Steel Typing and enormous defense stat. That said, Rampardos wasn't a true RU Pokemon and dropped to NU. There, it didn't bother with Mixed, opting instead to Choice Band Head Smash 
everything in sight. While it had to be careful to avoid status while switching in, it was able to crush just about every slow, bulky Pokemon in the tier, such as Masharna, Mandibuzz, and Alomomola. As we know by now, even Resist like Seismitoad and Golurk weren't safe. And as we also know by now, an insanely strong attack does not a good Pokemon make. And Rampardos's low speed, frail defenses, and weaknesses to common attacks far outweighed its sheer power. It couldn't keep up with the offensive onslaught of all the Ludicolo, Samurai, Sock, and Charizard running around. It was used so little even in NU that it became among the first Pokemon in history to become untiered, meaning not recommended for usage in any singles tier. While it may seem weird for a Pokemon rivaling even Deoxys' attack for power to be placed alongside the likes of Beautifly and Beedrill, truth is stranger than fiction, and nowhere is that more apparent than in Pokemon tiering systems. At least Rampardos had an interesting place in RU, and it was viable in NU. It just wasn't so easily placed on teams thanks to its delicate nature, thus leading to its low usage. Alright listen, Rampardos actually has a pretty good list of pros when arguing for its VGC usage. Stab Rock Slide, two phenomenal abilities in Sheer Force and Mode Breaker, and of course a bewildering high attack stat to back it all up. Now if only the cons weren't so staggeringly bad. That speed, those defenses, sure if Rampardos got a hit off it could devastate the enemy, but good luck with that. In fact it was even harder in doubles than in singles, since even if Rampardos was able to eliminate one opposing Pokemon, it'd have another foe to control. 10 with. What's more, Rampardos' raw power wasn't worth using when there was another perfectly good rock dinosaur available, and I'm not talking about Bastiodon. Tyranitar may not have hit as hard as Rampardos, but it was better in virtually every other way, so the ways that mattered, in other words. It stands to reason that the only success Rampardos ever saw was a set that emphasized getting one hit off no matter what. Nugget Bridge user Talking Lion managed to finish top 4 of the Nugget Bridge Invitational using a Scarf Jolly Rampardos, which was pretty much the only only way to get this thing to work outside of Trick Room. Either way, Rampardos would be vulnerable to any and all forms of speed control, including slower Pokemon, faster Pokemon or choice users, priority, and just plain defensive play such as good switching, protect, or redirection. So suffice to say, this thing may have fared better in the Stone Age. As expected, after receiving none of the significant buffs Rampardos would need to become a halfway decent singles Pokemon, it fell through the tiering rung once more. However, it wasn't doomed to become untiered for a second generation in a row. This time, a new sub NU tier came into existence, PU, and Rampardos made its home there. It finally wasn't on the gimmicky side, like it always was, even on its best days in the generations prior. Sure, it wasn't a pillar of the metagame or anything, but it was a legitimate choice. As a wall breaker, it was, of course, peerless. With U-turn and Volt Switch support to get it onto the field safely, its sheer force boosted physical attacks decimated just about everything. Superpower ripped even the massively bulky Audino to shreds, and even Eviolite Tangela wasn't safe, as Rampardos in fact wanted it to switch in so it could destroy it with Fire Blast. Ice Beam was also an option as that destroyed Marowak. It was especially dangerous with sticky web support, which removed most teams' method of dealing with Rampardos, outspeeding it. However, it wasn't the only thing Rampardos Rampardos could do. It could even function as a solid offensive stealth rock lead. Many players used Monferno and Golem for such a role, but Rampardos had a very important trick up its sleeve. With Surf, it would be able to one-hit KO Golem, bypassing its sturdy thanks to Moldbreaker, starting the battle with a huge advantage for its team against one of the most common leads. Its powerful head smash also made it difficult to remove the stealth rock it had set up without sustaining heavy damage. Plus, head smash's recoil, if it was enough to faint Rampardos, could be used to block a rapid spin or fog attempt, allowing the players to maintain and apply pressure with the rocks. Overall, Rampardos was finally a legitimate part of a tier, and while not a world beater, it was a genuinely solid PU Pokemon. Gen 6 had been nice to Rampardos, at least when compared to the relative misery it had endured in other gens, but Gen 7 went right back to kicking it in the Pokeballs. Even PU was not hospitable to it anymore, as its nemesis Agron had returned to just about entirely outclass any attempts at choice ban. To make matters worse, Lycanroc made up for its frailty and weakness to common attacks with speed, allowing it to actually abuse Swords Dance as well as priority Acelarock, which effectively made it outclass Scarf Rampardos too. Sad as it was, there really was no reason to use Rampardos in PU if one's aim was to win, and it returned to the barren depths of untiered. But hey, at least it got to be with its Gen 4 buddy Luxray.
And that's it. So how good was Rampardos actually? Well, it was a glass cannon. Insanely powerful and insanely frail. That's not necessarily bad, by the way. Just look at Medicham. However, the problem with Rampardos is that it's a slow glass cannon, which meant in most battles, the glass part was significantly more pronounced than the cannon part. Even attempts to fix its speed through Choice Scarf or Rock Polish were doomed to fail because it was just slow as well as being so immensely frail that it would either not be able to set up safely or be revenge killed by a priority attack. As a result, Rampardos plummeted through the tiering rung, even being amongst the first generation of Pokemon to receive the rank of untiered in black and white. Luckily, it carved out a legitimate niche for itself in Gen 6 PU, or it would have been untiered for three generations straight, seeing as it returned to the non-tier in Gen 7. Hopefully, if Diamond and Pearl remakes come out, they give Rampardos something, but thus far, its head smashes have been punctuated with heartbreak. Thanks for watching, everyone, and as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Rampardos? Do you think fixing all of its flaws to make it viable would make it too broken, or do you think it'd be fine? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.